let's let's dive into hotel rooms. Uh, Brian, you had a few recommendations on how to choose your room before booking or when you arrive there. Uh, I know one of one of the thing you mentioned, uh, and of course you need to use a little bit of your courage because yes, people will look at you like you're your cook, but ask where the Wi-Fi routers are in the hotel before booking if you feel especially sensitive, right? Yeah. So if you have your meter with you, um, you can, if you don't want to even like talk to them, you can say, Hey, I'm just going to walk down the hallway and, and test and test something. Or you can just like go and walk down the hallway. I often do <laughs> yeah. that. I just pass the front desk and I'm act like you're already checked in and you yeah. just go walk down the hallway and, and test real quick and then see which, which side of the hotel is going to be better. And typically you want to be on the first floor because the lowest floor you're you're not as exposed to the wireless signals like the radio and the television signals like you're like the more you can see the better view you have the the also it means the better view that the antennas have of, of your hotel suite and like the building and everything so if you're down lower it's kind of like living in a valley but also having all these building other surrounding buildings that are blocking and filtering a lot of the wireless frequencies from antennas that are out of sight. So ground floor is better typically, and then figuring out where they put the Wi-Fi routers and asking them like, hey, are the Wi-Fi routers located here? Also, I don't wanna be in a room that's next to a utility or mechanical room because sometimes the electrical will all be going like in that one area. You don't wanna be in a hotel room that's like right next to all the electricity for the entire hotel. So that's where the, the meter is really important because you can test the magnetic field, you can test the Wi-Fi all at the same time in one go. And you know for sure if you're going to be in an extreme situation or just a semi okay situation. Yeah. And you also mentioned when it comes to the location, sometimes near the middle of the hotel could be helpful if the room is you know separated with layers and layers and layers of different bu buildings uh building materials you mentioned marble granite concrete appliances other people absorbing the ems for you thank you guys uh, but you know if you have your room that is not right next to a tower or to multiple towers it could be it, it could be cleaner so it's just ideas to try to find a cleaner room but again if you find your room is not clean you can ask to be changed uh, if if you feel especially sick in a room. I mean, you can ask to to have the room changed. Same thing with mold. I know that for certain people, they're so sensitive. If they smell the mold as they enter the room, they're like, "No, I cannot, you know, stay here. I uh, I gotta be uh, changed." So of course, you you have to ask for what works for you, and it might it might be tough. It might be tough. I'll give you that because of course. It's going to be, you're going to be the only complaining customer among, you know, a hundred thousand people. Uh, but hopefully in the future, there's going to be more EMF circle members being annoying everywhere in the world. And then it's going to be, become something normal. Um, we, we talked about many different things here, like unplugging, um, bringing the EMF uh, meter sample tech 33. And also you mentioned Brian, creating a biohacking checklist to make sure that you know, you bring all your devices. That's something that, in fact, for me, when I go to any sort of business travel, I always make a list with check marks because I tend to forget, ah, I should have brought this and that. And, you know, uh, it just lowers my stress levels. I make sure not to forget any of these little hacks. Yeah. And the checklist is important because you want to make sure you bring the right things that you don't want to forget. But also you need to use that when you check out of your Airbnb or your hotel oh, so yeah. you don't leave anything behind. That's that's my main purpose for putting that on there because I've left so I've left probably hundreds of dollars worth of like EMF mitigation behind just because I forgot to unplug it from the yeah. wall. The green waves, I find that you you plug them in and then you're like, you don't even see them when you check out somehow. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I they're make little flags that like with stickers, kind of like you do when it snows and like you want to know where the driveway is? <laughs> yeah. I want to do that for the like the plug-in filters so that it's like a little flag that's like, hey, don't forget me. It'll exactly. be in the travel kit if we develop when we develop that. Exactly. Well, let's take uh, a few minutes to finish here. I, I want to focus on the Airbnbs. Uh, 
I've I've traveled around the world from July 2022 to 2023 uh, with my family, with my wife Jan and uh, my my son who was four at the time, Elliot, and we um, we experienced many different types of Airbnbs. You know, in multiple countries. I'm talking about Asia, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, and each time I was able to turn off the Wi-Fi inside the router. So how do you do that? Well, you go to the router, you take it, you look under the router. You're gonna find usually the admin password and username. And if not, you're gonna learn about the model of that router. So if you go on the internet and search for that model in uh, admin settings or how to get into the admin, most often than not, you will be able to get inside. And believe it or not, I could even get into the Thai uh, uh, router. Everything was in Thai, but I could translate on my browser and I was able to navigate the menus that were written in Thai language. So sometimes it's more tedious than you'd like, but it's worth it. And I was able to turn off the Wi-Fi antennas in each situation and use my Ethernet cables to have my son's tablet wired in for months. And sometimes we were staying there for two or three months in an Airbnb, you know, so long-term stays. So it's even more important to try to mitigate these things if you're going to stay there for months because we really avoided these exposures. My computer was wired. My phone was wired in the morning because I had my converters. So it's just good habits to take. If you're there for one day, might not be worth your time. Maybe you'll use, you know, a Faraday bag over the router if you can find it. But still, even if you don't turn off the router, uh, the Wi-Fi inside the router, you can still be cabled in and avoid the exposure from your machine, right? So there's still value to doing that as well. Uh, and Brian, you had something something about that as well? Yeah, just uh, like that's great to be able to turn off the Wi-Fi and you want you definitely want to confirm it with an EMF meter if possible. Oh, yes. Because uh, we have tested multiple times over the last few years, like new routers where you turn it off in the settings. Like I've spent like half an hour like logging into the person's router at 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 a EMF home test, and then I turn it off and it says it's off on the software, but it's still emitting from the router. Yeah. So, um, so some, there's some models out there that don't truly turn off. And that's why no matter what, you need to test with the EMF meter uh, to confirm that you've turned it off. Otherwise, you still have the exposure and, uh, and don't even have the ability to connect because the information or the data is not sending, but the, the, the Wi-Fi signal still is. Yeah, and there's many reasons I, I could get on in many situations that I, I can think of where this happens. But in, in all situations, if you're not sure, you don't have a meter to verify, well, try to turn it off and then at night unplug it. Even yeah. if you're not sure, you know, just before going to bed. So especially if it's a new environment, you don't know exactly what's going on. You can just, you know, unplug everything be before bed or even in many Airbnbs, I was able to find the breakers and, and turn them off. Sometimes it might lead, you know, to weird problems with owners. Make sure to turn everything the way it was before. If you don't want, you know, Airbnb claims and also even in hotels, you know, I'm I'm very careful of replacing things. Um, but you know, yeah, that's just a, a, a small note, especially if you, you know, you turn off all the breakers and you forget to turn them back on it, the, the, the owners of these places will sometimes freak out. Like, what are you doing with my electricity? Right. It's kind of a, a bizarre <laughs> thing to do nowadays. Hey, this is Nick, the EMF guy, Pino. You know, I am the co-creator of the EMF circle, along with my colleague, Brian Hoyer from Shielded Healing. What you saw today, this short video, is a preview of the longer interview that we did for our circle members. Every month, we have a masterclass like one of these or a Q&A session with me and Brian most of the time. So you get personal support and attention on your EMF reduction journey. So if you want to reduce EMF because you are personally sensitive or you're just trying to take precautionary measures to better your health and minimize the risk associated with wireless and other types of EMFs, then the EMF circle is the place to be. We have a ton of archives now. We have several months worth of Q&As that you can can listen back to everything is pre record is recorded you can either join live or just listen to the replay so we have a cars master 
masterclass. We have a pr free protection masterclass uh, also that we did, and we're going to have several other masterclasses moving forward. So we hope that you join us inside the EMF circle. Just visit emfcircle.com or click the link under the video to join us. I hope to see you then.